Good evening. Welcome to Joy Community Fellowship. This is Wednesday night with the pastors. Again, pastors. <laughs> yeah, again, in a pastors. while. <laughs> yeah, I was on vacation last week, and the week before, Pastor Bob had his his granddaughter was born, so he Absolutely. was out. So uh, it's good to be back, folks. Yes. But we definitely want to welcome you here. Got some great news for you tonight. Um, many of you know that one in our midst, uh, Miss Vicky, has been. She's been having a struggle with everything going on, and her health has not been good, and they've been trying to figure out what's going on. We just got the word today from from Gary that she is doing tremendously better. Praise God for that. Absolutely. She is eating better. She is gaining some of her strength and weight back, and that is awesome. That's a a praise. That's a God moment right there. So... uh, we want to definitely thank God for that and continue to pray for his his hand on in that situation because many of you that, that are part of this church know that Miss Vicky plays our piano mm-hmm. and it has been it's been sad without her. So yep. we miss her ter- terribly um and want her back as soon as possible. Yep. But all of you know mine and Pastor Bob's rule, we don't start any service without a prayer. So, so Pastor Bob. Yes. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much yes, for Lord. the good words about <clears throat> Miss Vicky, and we just pray, Lord, that you will be with her, continue to give her strength and encouragement each and every day. Yes, be Lord. with Gary and all of the family that's around them. And Lord, we just uh, we just pray that your hand of grace and mercy and, and healing will be there, right. and we just thank you so much for what you've done and what you will do. We thank you for the opportunity that we're able to be back together and and have a discussion this evening and we just pray lord for those that are watching that uh that the words that we share together lord will will be of a benefit of a blessing and and a help uh to individuals who are watching and lord we just we just thank you because mm-hmm. you give us all the 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 inspiration and the answers that we need we just need to look for them we need to trust you and so, Lord, I just pray that you will take this time that we share together to, uh, uh, to communicate the things that need to be communicated in this time. Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, now, <clears throat> you know, folks, we started out a couple weeks ago uh, on a little series here because we had some questions of, well, how is the Bible relevant today? Well, what does it yeah. take to be a Christian today? And and so Bob and I talked, and we said, well, we better start at the very beginning. Yep. Not Genesis 1-1, <laughs> but, you know, the first things, and if you go back and watch the ones before, if you already watched them, you know, we talk about the first thing is is accepting Christ. And then the second is your your profession, and then your public profession, and then mm-hmm. got into a little bit of baptism, and then talked you talked about, you talk about baptism. Yep. So I guess the next question is, well, well, Bob, I've already I've already accepted Jesus. Yeah, I've made it known to the world, so I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not denying him before men. Mm-hmm. I've been dunked, as we Baptists call it. <laughs> um, so I've been dunked under. Yeah, some of us till we bubble. <laughs> um, so what's next? Well, and as as I started out last week talking about the uh, the fact that the the Great Commission kind of gives us marching mm-hmm. orders as as a church. Right. And uh, um, if Martin will throw that up there on the the screen, there it's the uh, uh, Matthew ch- chapter twenty eight verse nineteen and twenty it says, "Go therefore and make disciples." That's our that's our charge is to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, <coughs> baptizing them. We talked about baptism last week, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. So that the second part is what I want to talk about tonight, is that teaching them to observe all things that mm-hmm. Jesus Christ has commanded us. Now, there's a lot of things that Jesus commanded, and then there's that you can mm-hmm. kind of boil them down to just a few things, but we want to talk about this thing, and it, it, it at the beginning, it says "make disciples." That's right. We get confused. That's a, that this term "disciples" kind of like a church term or a uh, biblical term. A lot of people kind of think, "Oh, disciples, those were people that walked around with Jesus." Yeah, wore but, robes and had sandals. So yeah. do I have to wear a robe and wear sandals, and, Bob? And <laughs> maybe I don't know. 
if you like. <laughs> but but a, the, a disciple is simply a learner, mm-hmm. someone who learns from. Right. And I, I'm going to share with uh, with you a passage from John chapter one, starting at verse thirty seven. Uh, two disciples, these were disciples of John the Baptist, by the way, says, two of the disciples heard him, they talk about Jesus, heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them, said to them, what do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, mm-hmm. where are you staying? Uh, this is kind of comical, actually, because two of John the Baptist's disciples had heard what John the Baptist had said about Jesus, you know, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Right. And and they're following John the Baptist, and they think, well, maybe we need to find out a little bit about this guy. So here's the mm-hmm. picture. Jesus is walking along, and these two guys kind of just, who were with John the Baptist, they just kind of come up, and they were following him around behind Jesus, and Jesus kind of knows that somebody's behind him. He says, So he turns around and says, what do you guys want? And they they're they're caught. Where are you staying? They, they go. Uh, uh, well, where are you staying, teacher? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And 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 this is the this is the answer, in in verse thirty nine. I think he says, "Oh, my glasses are slipping again." He says, "He said to them, this is Jesus speaking. He said to them, come and see.' And that's all I'll I'll have to read right there. He said, "Come and see," and and the first invitation." to be a disciple is to come and see what Jesus is like. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, uh, Martin, if you go ahead and put verse 43 up there, it says, the next day, after all this happened, he purposed to go to, into Galilee, and he found Philip, and Jesus said to him, follow me. And so those are, those are the first two calls that Jesus gives us to be disciples. He says, come and see what I'm all about. Follow me, and you will find what my teachings are and, and how you should live. And so that's the beginning, the beginning point of discipleship. And, uh, you know, we talk about discipleship and, and how do we do that in, in the church setting for today. Uh, that's, a, that's a big question. You were talking to me earlier today, and uh, you, you used the term training union. Training union, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and it had nothing to do with the bicycle with training wheels, you know. But <laughs> well, and and folks, you know, I was talking to Pastor Bob about training union, and, and I I am thirty nine years old, mm-hmm. holding, um, <laughs> and I can barely remember training union, barely. I'm talking like it's been it's been kind of a thing that's been kicked to the side since I was growing up in church about seven eight years old mm-hmm. um that's about as far back as i can remember and it kind of stopped and you know a lot of you folks who knew about training union you remember it you're a little older um a little wiser you know what <laughs> training union was and it was designed from my understanding and yes. you may correct me was yeah. it was designed as a discipleship program you came and you got a little bit more in depth of who jesus is what jesus mm-hmm. was and what we're supposed to be about yeah and yet, now we're getting these questions this day and time, Bob, like, well, how is the Bible, the whole reason we're doing this segment? Yeah, and, 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 and uh, I think the reason that we wanted to talk about this, and, and we'll probably be talking about this for a number of weeks, actually. Well, there's multiple stages uh, of discipleship. Yeah, so. because discipleship is, is, not, is not, you know, you talked about making a profession of faith and making your decision, make a profession of faith, following Jesus Christ and baptize them. We dunk them, we sit them on the pews, and there they sit and rot. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's not really what is supposed to happen. No. Uh, we, there, it's an ongoing journey of learning and knowing and, and, and be getting closer and closer and closer to Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. And you, you talk about training union. I do remember training union. <laughs> but before it was training union, it was uh, BYPU. I think I, if I got that right. Baptist be Baptist Young People's Union or something like that. <laughs> okay, you but threw the, a new acronym yeah, at me. I've never heard that one, folks. See, 
but I was not part of that. That that came before me. But mm-hmm. after after training union, that term training union went away. It actually morphed into what was called discipleship training, and 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 churches. You know, I'll just be frank with you. What killed training union? Sunday night Disney killed training union. Hmm. The wonderful world of Disney, when I was a kid, came on on, on Sunday night, and the people who usually went to church, you know, Disney, at, back, at least back then, they had nice, wholesome movies and, and all, all that kind of thing. And, and really, uh, the, the church attendance for, for training union just kind of dropped off because what happened was that people were saying, well, we do Sunday school, we get together and we do Bible learning in Sunday school, and then we come back and we do Bible learning in training union, and isn't that just repeating the same thing over twice on Sunday? And and the the people just stopped coming. Mm. Wonderful world of Disney and the mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. <laughs> he doesn't know what I'm, I'm lost, talking folks. about. <laughs> but the, the the thing about it is that. Uh, over over time, the way we do discipleship has shifted. It has, but the yeah. purpose of discipleship is still the same. And uh, most most groups do, or most churches do discipleship now in small groups. Yeah. Uh, they call them cell groups. They call well, them life they groups. Have the they program D Life. Yes, there's which there's is pretty all, popular right now. Yeah, there's I mean, all kinds of all kinds of mechanisms to do discipleship, but basically what discipleship is, is what Joel and I do on a daily basis. <laughs> and and it's very, very important. And it's not something, you know, discipleship, when, when Jesus called his disciples and he gathered them around him, he said, come and see, follow me, and they followed him everywhere he went, and they watched what he did. And after a while, he said, okay, guys, I'm going to send you out, and you're going to do what I did. Yeah. And, and they did that. And then they came back, and they said, wow, you know, even the demons were, uh, we could cast out demons, and we could heal the sick. And they, they were amazed at the things that they could do because they did what Jesus did. Yeah. And I hadn't cast out any demons or I, healed I any sick either. recently. I I've prayed. met some pastors who claim they yeah. have. I'm not. I can't verify but, it. I can't but, say they haven't, and I can't say they have. But the the point's not not that. But the point is that Jesus pulled them around him mm-hmm. to teach them as they did life. And that's one reason you know some discipleship groups are called life groups. groups. Yep. Uh, and and so what Joel and I do almost on a daily basis when we we see each other on a daily basis <laughs> is <laughs> we hadn't seen each other in about a week and a half. So yeah. that's that's the thing. Uh, is, is that we we talk about how you deal with things mm-hmm. and and what the Bible says, and sometimes we debate what the Bible yeah. says, and we try to understand what the Bible says and what it means in our context today, yeah. and that is sorely sorely needed. Uh, we need Christians. We need you know we we. As, as a church, we're not interested in simply making new converts, although we are interested in people coming to know Jesus Christ right. as their Savior. But that's not the end of the line. That's only the beginning of the process. Uh, last week we talked about the three, three-stage process of becoming or, or being saved. You are saved, the point process. You are becoming saved, which is a continuing process. And one day when we all get to heaven... We are saved, you see, and so so those those three things: regeneration, sanctification, glorification. Those are the big oh, words. Oh, you're using them big words, yeah. Again, Bob. <laughs> but but those those things, what we're in the midst of. If you're if you're a Christian, if you've made your profession of faith, we're in the midst of that sanctification, mm-hmm. where God is molding us and making us, and He does this through life, and He does this in mentorships. I mean, and and peer groups. One of the ways you can tell folks is if you're if you're changing there is, is if things are happening is if you do something, you say something, mm-hmm. and then you go, oh, why did I say that? Or why did I do that? That's an indication that you are in that changing period. That's an indication that you are in discipling. And I just want to say, you know, 
Yeah, I want to throw this in because I know our time's kind of ticking down a little mm -hmm. bit. And but a lot of folks say, well, well, I don't go because it's boring. I don't want to go sit in a pew and learn. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Folks, to me, the discipleship training is probably the most fun part of mm -hmm. church. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. because it should be an open forum. It's a it, you know, like Pastor Bob and I, we have a discussion. Mm -hmm. We're going back and forth. And if you think back to school, the, the where you learned the most was where you were active in the classroom. Not exactly. just you weren't just reading and and scribbling notes. You were talking to each other. Yeah, and well, you know, one of the criticisms that I get from my wife when I preach is she says, "I don't want to go there, Bob." <laughs> she says, "Tell us how." How to do it? Tell us, and and I'm going. You know, it's really hard in a sermon to to get into a situation. I, I can I can understand. You know, when I'm in a situation, I begin to think biblically mm -hmm. about that situation, and I can I can apply what the Bible says in that specific instance. In discipleship groups or discipleship training in discipleship, you can talk about those in. Incidents, yeah. situations, what's in a, occurring in a things. private, yep. in a private and personal setting, mm -hmm. not in a public setting. And you know, and a, and a sermon is a public setting, and that's the, that's the that's mm -hmm. kind of the rub. So there's that place for discipleship where we can say, you know, this is happening in my life, and what does the scripture say, and how should I deal with this issue or that issue, and and you know, there's a great. Uh, verse in Proverbs that talks about that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Proverbs 27, mm -hmm. 17. It says, iron sharpens iron, or, or as iron shop, sharpens iron, if I can talk, so one man sharpens another. Mm -hmm. And so we, discipleship uh, is, you know, we're walking with Christ. Christ is right here. Mm -hmm. this, he's, he's the Word of God. He's the living Word of God. We have the written Word of God. And so uh, so we we look at what the the Bible says, and we begin to think about life biblically and things like that, and that's really what discipleship is all about. So, so let me just point the question at you, Bob. Sure. I mean, I can I know the I think I know the answer, but let me, get let ready. Me, knock it out. Yeah, let me let me throw this <laughs> fastball at you. So, what is the point? Why is discipleship needed today? What it, it's about learning about Jesus, but why should I do that, Bob? Why can't I just sit on a pew and, I mean, what? Well, there's what a lot of people who do. What? But what impact would it should it have, or would it have on my life? Because then, you know, we talked about being being relevant and the Bible being a a relic of days gone yeah. by, and yeah. which I totally disagree with. Well, you you totally disagree with it because you know what it <laughs> says, or at least in part. Of course, now <laughs> in I, part, I, I yeah. was talking to my friend Kevin. We were texting back together and. And uh, he he said something about you you people who are biblically literate you're messing everything up, <laughs> and and because I'd said something about being biblically literate and he and and so I, I gave him my my definition I said by the way my definition of being biblically literate is someone who knows enough about the Bible to know that they don't know squat, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like okay. The more you know, the, the, the more you realize that you don't know, and it's about a trust in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, we've talked about, you know, the, the whole world situation, the chaotic situation in our country. A lot of that comes from the fact that, that people don't know where we've come from. All right. We don't know our own history. And if we don't know the Bible uh, as as you know, Western culture people, then we don't even know what Western culture is because it was based on this word. That's right. And so, so a lot of people say, well, it's not important. Well, your whole history is based on this. Yeah, it's important. But it, it, that's just on a kind of well, a I think we could tertiary take, level. But. I think we could take it a step further. And, folks, I want you to understand this. This is, you want to know why the biblical discipleship okay baptize and that's it no that doesn't work because that's what we've been doing for the last 25 30 years and you step outside the doors of this church and you're hit with the news of what's going on you want to know why that's going on because we have failed to do the first part 
mm -hmm. of the Great Commission, go forth and, and make disciples. Mm -hmm. We have stopped making disciples. We, we, we made started converts, making but in, not disciples. Made converts, but not disciples. That's and, right. And so we really, that's the part of the uh, the task that we really need to work on. Yeah, so you you're talking about kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. Well, you're talking. We, we got to ask that question. How is the Bible relevant today? Why? How is it not? Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to talk more about it next next time. Yeah. But the whole thing is, folks, we want to have discipleship training because that's what's going to fix what's going on around us right now that we're so worried about. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's my two cents for tonight. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got two cents worth it. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you being here with us. We'll talk more about this discipleship and, and, and how the Bible uh, actually does impact our daily lives if we, if we know how to, to interpret it and how to use it and know what it says. And so uh, we're, uh, we're looking right. forward to the subsequent talks that we have. It's good to have Pastor Joel back. And Pastor Bob back. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do this all by yourself. But it is. <laughs> but we appreciate you being here and tuning in and we just thank you uh let's let's pray pastor Joel. you want to pray for us this time i sure will lord thank you for who you are help us to remember that thank you for being our our, our friend our our lord and our savior thank you for all the blessings and the miracles that you continue to do even today uh with those in our number who are in need and those who are who are sick Lord, we ask that you continue to show the miracles of who you are throughout our land as we go through what yes. we're dealing with right now. Lord, we know only you can fix these situations. Lord, help this program to be, to be relevant for you and to be for the folks who need it most. God bless each one of us as we go throughout the week. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good night, Good night. folks. Thank you.